Hi, and welcome to an introduction to prep and position. This video will cover creating a properly paginated saddle stitched book, adding text to the cover pages, and also correcting page numbering. I have my book here, and I also have my front and pack cover, so I'll go ahead and shift click and bring them all in at the same time. You may have noted when I brought the files in that the book's front and back cover were the last two files imported. The very last file is the cover. I'd like to have that as the cover, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull that up to the front. The inside of the front cover I'd also like to have is the inside of the back cover, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that, select my back cover, and then I'm going to go ahead and paste it. I would like to add some verbiage to the front cover. So I double click the front cover which puts us into editing mode. So I grab the text tool, I select the color, select the font, select the size, and then I can go ahead and type. Once I have my text on the page, I really want to make sure that it's in the center. So I'm going to go out to my rulers with my cursor and pull in a guide. I'm going to pull my guides in a little bit more than two and a half inches from each side just to make sure my text is somewhat centered. So I've got my guides there. I'm going to grab my text and just center it within those two guides. Once I'm done with my guides, I can go ahead and get rid of them by taking the cursor and pulling them off to the side, getting them out of the way. There's some other editing that I'd like to do with a couple of the other pages. So since I know some of my pages are already numbered, and I know they're out of sequence now because I've added pages, I want to go ahead and mask them. I have some pages that have numbers on the right side and also on the left side. So I'm going to select my mask tool, and you'll note that when the mask tool comes up, I have a palette. I can select the color. Default color is white. And then I can also select where that mask is going to be placed either the square or I can reverse the mask out after it's drawn. I'm going to draw just a small white box over top of that number. Draw the small white box over the other side. I can go ahead and shift click now and select both of these. Copy them. And then I can select the pages that I want them applied to. When I right-click the document, you'll see that I have Paste, Paste Special, and also Paste. It's all pages, selected pages, even or odd. I'm going to choose Selected Pages. So once my mask is applied, I'd like to go back in and check my documents to make sure that I've got them all covered. Once the old page numbering is covered, I'm going to go back in now and add my own page numbers. I'll go to my Page Content Tool and Page Numbers. Select my format, select where. I could use the same for both front and back, but I'm going to deselect that. I can also designate what pages to start with. I don't want to page number my cover, so I'm going to start page numbering at number three. And then I also don't want to number my back cover, so I'm going to go in and remove page 15 and 16 from the numbering sequence. I'm going to paginate it now for a book. I'm going to select my in position booklet. I'm going to choose uh, 11 by 17 stock. You'll notice that both side printing is automatically selected. I could scale if I like. I could also set the final size of the book itself. I could add bleed, creep. I can adjust the placement in the cell. There's also an adjustment for the placement on the page and the alignment. I've got the crop mark option and also image shift and margin adjustment if I like. So I would like to add a cover to my book. So I'm going to select covers, print cover, front and back, and then I'm going to select my light blue cover stop. Now it's time to add finishing. I'll select my finishing. I'm going to view my document in reader mode. I can view my book now as if I was paging through it and reading the manual and make sure everything is where I need it to be. I 
can save my preset and a hot folder now that will apply the same settings that I've just created. I'll call it booklet. I can give it a description. And now I can either create or allocate a hot folder. I'll browse out to my C drive where I've created a folder already called booklets. But you'll note that I could make a new folder at the end of this location if I like. I could allow it to use an incoming job ticket, a JDF or an RJF ticket. I would like to have it print to the printer that is allocated for this preset. I could save it off as a print job as well. Notice I could save it off as an RJF file, which is a RICO job file, which would allow me to bring it back into prep, edit it, and also print it from prep. Or I could save it as a JDF file as well. Add a prefix, and I can password protect it. I can save it out as a PDF, and I have control over the data compression, adding a prefix and also file protection. So you'll notice I do have a booklet preset now in my drop downs that I can utilize anytime I bring a file into prep. I can apply this and have the same settings applied. I also have a hot folder now in my C drive that will allow me to drop documents into it and will also apply these settings. So thanks for spending some time with me. This was Introduction to Prep and Position and Creating Booklets. Mm -hmm.